Hi there, welcome back. In the last part, I showed you how to create a dashboard and we just used the one report. I forgot to add visualization from another report. You can add it in a similar way. For example, if I'm going to come in this demo workspace and I'm going to go to this auto create report here, there are certain visualizations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add one of them from there. For example, sales by region size. You can see this personalized visual. This is what I was talking about. You can come here and you can change the chart. Rather than that, you can use this one. And if you would like to add any more part over here, that you can do that. For example, right now it's on scene, this size range. You can maybe add another dimension. For example, you can come here and you can say, hey, I would like to add a gender. So you can do that. And this is what a drill down feature is, which I wasn't able to find it onto my report when we created. So this is drill down. Once you do that, now you can select these arrows so you can up or down and you can even expand it like this. So that's how you use it. Now, the part is we can pin this visualization and we have to pin it for our dashboard. But here you again see that these visualizations are not basically giving you the feature to pin it out. So how to pin them? Again, you have to come here and then you would find this and you would say, hey, existing dashboard, adventure works dashboard and pin it. Okay, let's pin this one and pin it. That's it. Now you can go back to your dashboard and say, don't save it. And here you would find your two visualizations that we just talked about it. Let's try to refresh it and see why the data is not appearing. Somehow this data is not appearing because report is loading probably. That's why. Let me check if there's any other option. We have to see no. It should appear here. I'm not sure what bug is causing you, but you can add it and you can see the proof that you are going back to the same report if you click on that one. So this is the first part. Now we are going to move forward and we are going to talk about the Power BI admin portal. First of all, why Power BI admin portal is important. This is important because all your tenant settings are going to control by it. Whether you can share a report or not, whether you can download in CSV files or not, or in Excel files or not, or there are some preview features you would like to allow for everyone, etc. All you get it over here. What you have to do, basically you have to click on this, uh, this gearing icon, click over here. And then you go to this admin portal where it's saying governance and insights. So click over here, you would find this portal. If you are not finding these options over here, that means you don't have Power BI admin permission. You have to talk to your Office 365 admin or who already has Power BI admin permissions. They are going to help you out to get it out. As I mentioned, domain is a feature which is in preview. So what does it do? Basically, you can create a new domain over here. Like I have created finance, another I can create it sales. And you can also mention who can manage the these domains. And I'll say, hey, this should be my address. Connect it. BIConsultingPro.com. So you can create your domains over here. And then you can add the workspaces in these domains. So you have to assign a workspace over here. And I can say, okay, assign by workspace name. And you can search your workspace here. I'm going to say, hey, demo workspace. And I can assign this to this one. So this is kind of a experience you would get it over here and you can further learn it more after clicking over here. The most important part over here is going to be the usage metrics. The usage metrics basically going to give you an experience that how many users are using your reports or dashboards. Then also you would get the how many number of data sets you have, then how many number of dashboards you have, etc. and so many other information. So basically it's a way that you can check the logs of your Power BI service. With the help of this, you can let us know that how many people are using it or not using your reports or dashboards and what you should take the action over there. Next to that is the tenant settings. Tenant settings is basically for everything, like whether you want to use any preview feature or not, how you are going to control your workspaces, for example, create workspaces. Who can create your workspace? Here I'm saying entire organization can create or you can also say only specific security groups. That means only the admins, you can mention the admins edu group over here and only admins can do that. So everywhere you would go in these settings, you would find the similar options that who can control it, like semantic model workspaces or define workspace retention period, etc. So you have to choose it that how you would like to do that. For example, I want even somebody deleted my workspace. They should be able to retain it in 90 days and I can apply it. That's how you do. It generally takes up to 15 minutes, but 99% cases it happens immediately. Then you would get more options like these export settings. I was talking about that who can publish on web. Then you have copy and paste visual. Who can do that? Who can export to Excel data from Power BI service? Who can export to CSV? Who can download the reports, etc. So all these are over here and also who can make it certify. 
So please go through these settings. These are going to help you a lot. Then there are certain app settings as well. Create a template, push apps to end users, push apps to the entire organizations. Everything is over here. Some of the premium, these are integration settings, which are the premium settings like allowing XML connections, etc. Do check them out. Then there are Power BI Visual settings, R or Python settings, your dashboard settings, whether you want to use the web content on dashboard tiles or not. Then admin API settings. In some cases, you also would like to use the APIs. APIs are application programming interface. That means you can call Power BI reports from another app or you may also would like to use the Power Automate or something to refresh your data automatically, etc. Then QA visuals that we used, its settings are over here. So these are the settings that you should have a look and you should work on them. There are a lot. I cannot go through all of them. And then you should all go for the separate Power BI admin tutorial if you would like to get to know everything about it. Now we have the users as well. I'm going to discard it. If you would like to check and manage users, you have to use Office 365 Admin Center. If you would like to use the organizational visuals, here you can delete them if you don't want to use them and you can stop the people to use any uncertified visuals always use the certified visuals this is the part which i haven't explained you but whenever you go to the visuals and you would find the three dots at the bottom so you can use power bi app source from where you can download any number of customized visuals those are gonna not by default in power bi but you can bring them out so the only thing is that you should only use the certified by Microsoft one. Otherwise, their performance can be degraded or you can also leak your data. Then you have the workspace settings here. You can manage your workspace. If you are admin, you can also get the access to any of the workspace yourself. For example, if there is a workspace, this one, and I do, I'm not the admin of this, I can come to this access and I can type an email address over there, Merida, etc. And I can give her the access directly from here. Generally, I do it for myself if I want to get the access from any workspace. Now the part is custom branding that I told you that my logo is appearing here, etc. So you can upload your logo here. You can also upload the cover image here and then you can set the theme color as well. Here currently this one, but I can change it to this and I can say publish. It would take some time and you would see this over here. Then there's a protection matrix. If you would like to check that, that how many reports have been applied, sensitive labels, etc. You would get it everything over here. But sensitivity labels, etc. are the advanced topics, once again, not a part of this course, but I'll provide you links so that you can check them out. Then there is a feature content. If you have any feature content, you would find it over here. This was all about the admin portal in Microsoft Power BI, where you get all the different kinds of settings that you can manage from here. So this was the last part of this module. In the next module, I'm going to give you a data set and I'm going to explain you some of the requirements that would be your capstone project. And what you have to do for over there, I'm going to explain you in our next module. So please stay tuned and I'm going to see you in the next module.